everybody to a beginner class on UV resin jewelry. So I'm going to be showing you some of the very basics. And in the shopping list for today, I put a really nice kit, which is a great starter kit, has everything that you need to get started. It has um, a little bit of resin. It has a mold. It comes, um, the one that I linked in this particular class comes with some earring molds that I'll show you how to use. Um, it comes with a little bit of resin. It comes with some of the little... Um, things that you might need when you're making the different things. And then also you're definitely going to want some jewelry findings. So depending on what kind of jewelry you're making, there are molds to make rings. There are molds to make earrings. There are molds to make all different sorts of things, keychains, charms that you can put onto chains so that you can make necklaces and personalize those. There are so many different molds available too, that you can find exactly what you're looking for. If you need a feather, if you need a unicorn, if you need some sunglasses, if you need some gemstones, whatever kind of molds you need, there are so many available. I also really like using the alphabet letter molds because then you can really personalize something, make a really nice keychain. So it's fun to see what kind of molds are available. Also fun to see what kind of little mix-ins are available. If you have some sprinkles, if you have some little floral pieces, there's lots of fun ways to mix and match and make some really interesting things. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be focusing on some earrings. So I'll show you how to use the molds in order to create the earring shapes. And then even more importantly, I'm going to show you how to attach some of the jewelry findings to the earrings so that you will be able to wear them anywhere and everywhere. I love this set that I'm working on too um, that has some sparkle in it. So definitely in the sun, they're definitely gonna shine. And that's just a little bit of um, adding a little bit of extra and we'll add some little jump rings and put some earring backings on those too to be able to turn those into earrings. So like Chanel said before, um, I am outside in Dallas, Texas and I'm working outside today because UV resin has a lot of smells involved. So you definitely wanna work somewhere that has some really good ventilation. I'm on my back porch. If you hear a train, if you hear a dog, if you hear birds, that's, that's what's going on. I'm in my backyard. So I have some fans going, I have some good lights, but I don't want too much lighting and I don't wanna go out into the sunshine. So it might be a little darker in my picture today because it's UV resin. And when this resin sees the UV light, it hardens. And that's how we make the jewelry. So in the little kit too, is like this beautiful, um, if going to the nail salon, getting your nails done kind of piece that gives off this UV light. And it's set on a timer so that it can set your piece for a while. So the kit is great because it comes with all those things at once and you don't have to buy all the different things and gather them up. Once you have that starter kit, then you can keep adding more and more molds. You can keep adding more and more fun mix-ins and you can really make some cool things. So let's go over to my other camera and I'll show you what I'm working on. I have um, some of these pieces. We can turn these into little studs. So I'm gonna show you how to put some backs on some little tiny pieces to make some really cute studs. I'm gonna show you how to put some findings on the back of some hoops. And I'm going to show you some other molds that give you different options besides adding the findings to the back. Also, if you find a really good mold, you can make some cool rings. You can make even bracelets. They do have some bracelets that are some molds. And like I said, you can make things into keychains, into necklaces, and all sorts of things. So I have a really nice finding set that has some um, flat back studs. So I can attach and make some stud earrings. I also have some of the more dangly kind of hoop earrings. I'm going to need some different pliers. I like to use wire cutters to kind of cut apart the resin. I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. And then I'll definitely need two pairs of any kind of pliers to kind of work with some of the jump rings and work with some of the jewelry findings in order to create this jewelry. So this is going to be a fun adventure since I'm outside in the open. I'm hoping that everything works nicely and that there's not too much sunlight getting here on my back porch so that we can see exactly how this process works. So I'm going to start off with the mold that came with the kit that I um, suggested for this class. And you can see that it has these really nice cool hoops and it has these tiny little um, stud pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and show you 
you can use um, gloves, you can use a mask, anything that you need to keep yourself safe and protected during this class is a great idea. Like I said, I'm outside, so I have a lot of ventilation, but if I was doing it anywhere else, you'd wanna make sure that you have a lot of airflow moving around so that you don't make yourself sick or give yourself a headache with some of these different fumes. But what's great about UV resin compared to any other resin um, or the two-part resin that you might've seen in other products is how fast it is. So we do not have to leave this out and wait for it to dry for a day or two. Once I put this in, pop it with the light, less than a minute, you're going to have wearable pieces of jewelry ready to add those findings to. So it is a fast process, which makes it a really fun process because you can crank out lots of different things. So I have some UV resin and I'm going to start by using this tip and kind of placing a layer of UV resin into the bottom of this mold. And then after I put just a little bit in there, I'm definitely gonna go back with a toothpick, with a wooden stick, with something that I can get into those small spaces. Another good hint is inside of the jewelry findings kit, we have these eye pins and head pins. If you have questions as we go, please throw them in the chat and I'll be happy to try and answer as many of those as I can. But these eye pins and head pins are actually really great tools that we can use to kind of stir and kind of make sure that the resin is going into all the different spaces of the mold. So right now I just laid a little base layer of resin to kind of get the bottom of the mold set. Looks like I have a little glitter from last time that I'm getting out. And then you can decide, do you want to use color? Do you want to use mix-ins? So mix-ins are other things that you can purchase or that sometimes come with these kits also that are like sprinkles, little gold flecks. This one has some um, beach kind of starfish and seashells and different things inside of it. So if you want something on purpose, a little bit more meaningful, you can do that. We have stars, we have gems, we have colors, we have sprinkles. Normal, um, everyday kind of glitter is gonna work okay too. Of course it is glitter, so be careful. But you can put some color into this either by using a color um, mix-in, like one of these UV resin crafts creations. Now, one thing I'll tell you about these mix-in colors is that in order for UV stuff to work its magic, the light needs to be able to go through it. So when you're using a mold, you can't use a darker mold or you can't use one of those plastic molds that you can't see through because if the light can't get through to the bottom, it can't harden the UV resin. So the light needs to be able to get fixed. So even if you're, even if you're adding color, you wanna add just a little bit of color at a time so I'm literally going to add only one dot of red into this whole earring section. I just added that one tiny little dot. And then I'm going to take that eye pin I was talking to you about before, and I'm going to start stirring that color to make it go around into this mold. And it doesn't take much color, and you don't want the color to become opaque. You want the light to continue to be able to go through and make it a little bit more translucent because you need the light to be able to cure your resin. So I so far have just a little bit of a base layer. I'm gonna add a little bit more resin. And in the chat, there's a question about, are we making with resin if you're using epoxy? So this particular class is just gonna focus on the UV resin, which is already mixed for us with the proper proportions. And again, it's a totally different chemical process than the two-part epoxies um, because it's the light is gonna cure it and it's gonna be done. It doesn't have that long waiting time that the two-part epoxies do. So it's a much different craft. And what, because the light needs to come through, you're gonna only want to do smaller pieces. So if you had a giant painting that you were trying to put resin over top of, you do not want to put UV resin over top of it because it can't go over large spaces. It's meant for these really small crafts. So, so far I have a cool looking piece. 
I am eventually going to fill it all the way up to be level with the top of the mold. If it goes over the mold a little bit, that's okay because I'm going to show you how you can clip down those extra little pieces. I'm going to add some more resin and I am going to add some more color. And we can decide if we want to keep going or if we want to mix anything else. So I see someone else in the chat is saying that they usually mix in a silicone bowl. Perfect, absolutely. So instead of mixing in the mold, which is what I'm doing right now with this little stirring sticks, you can put some resin into a silicone little dish and you can do the same thing where you're mixing. And what's nice about doing it in a different dish rather than in the mold is especially if you're gonna lay down two different pieces, the coloring is going to be the same because you're using you're making sure of it by doing it in a separate bowl. So that's actually a really good good idea to try to make it more consistent. So for me, this is just kind of an easier method to get it done. And because this is a beginner's class, I just wanted to show you kind of quick and easy how to get this to happen. So now I'm taking the stir stick and I'm kind of moving that those color drops around. And at this point, the resin is all the way towards the top of the mold about to kind of overflow it. And I can decide if I wanna keep adding color or if I wanna kind of keep it a little airy. And I'm using the pick to kind of go around and make sure that there's no giant color blocks on the bottom that I'm not mixing up. So I can kind of spread that color around. And you can decide at this point if you want to keep going with adding anything else to it or if you just want to go for a colorful piece. I'm going to go ahead and make the second hoop down here. So I'm going to lay the first layer of my UV resin. Then I'm going to start putting in some drops slowly to try and match it to my other one. It'll stay liquid until it's cured by the sun, yes. So if I had too much artificial um, light right now too, it has a potential of doing that, um, but it does take that UV light either through this little um, light I have off to the side or from the actual sun to go and make it cure. So it's stored in these dark bottles and you can tell that the dark bottles are on purpose to not let any sun come through so that it can stay in that liquid format and you can keep it a much longer. So you wanna keep it um, the extra UV resin you haven't used yet, you want to make sure that you're keeping that somewhere safe and that's at a normal temperature and that's at a normal um, amount of light or darkness in order to keep it from curing. So definitely don't keep it by a UV lamp or else you're not going to be able to use it ever again. So I'm adding resin and I'm going to add a couple more drops of color in just a moment to make these really cool big hoops. And like I said, you can personalize these. So you can put in seed beads, you can put in, if someone has something special to them, some kind of memory, some kind of attachment, you can add that in and really make it a cool gift for someone else. I put two more drops and I'm gonna mix those together and try and get this as nice and even as I can. And then I'm gonna show you how quick and easy this is with the light. Good question. Someone in the chat is asking about bubbles. So there's always ways to get rid of your bubbles. The first is to be really careful when you're adding your resin to avoid them in the first place. But once they are there, there are some different ways. You can literally go through and poke some of them um, with a needle or with something like what I'm using right now um, and try and poke any air bubbles so that you make sure you have resin hardening in all of those places. But if that's not working for you, there are methods too that involve an open flame um, to try and burn away those oxygen bubbles. But of course you wanna be careful because you are working with some chemicals and you need to be super careful if you wanna try and take that route. So here we go. I have this mold filled with these two earring pieces. And here comes my UV light. So it's just this little thing that you see at different salons. And I'm gonna take this UV light and I'm gonna press this button and you can see how it's glowing on my table. And there are different amounts of time. 
Sometimes they're 30 seconds, sometimes they're 60 seconds, sometimes they're 90 seconds. It depends on lots of things, the brand, the kind. But notice how I've kind of positioned it in the middle to make sure that the light is touching all the parts of this mold. So I'm making sure that it's in the middle of this lamp. If you had something a little larger that you were trying, you might want to line up two lamps so that you can get them both at the same time. And I'm going to let this run through its complete cycle and it'll turn off when it's done. And then what's nice about these clear molds is that because they are clear, and right now this is doing a really good job of hardening the first round, I can actually turn the mold over and I can actually hit the light through the other side of the mold to make sure that it's good and hard before I start to take it out of the mold. And I think taking it out of the mold is definitely my favorite part. So how do you color clear UV resin? There are a couple ways. I've seen online, but I haven't had a ton of success with it, of adding just one drop of craft paint. So again, maybe thinking about using a silicone bowl, having some UV resin in, and just adding one drop of some kind of acrylic craft paint. I've also been told that you can use alcohol inks, but again, with alcohol inks, you want to be careful that it's not too dark of a color, because when the light is um, doing its magic, if it can't get through, it can't harden. So these are already pretty hard and these would probably be good to go, but I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna light it from this side too. So someone in the chat just mentioned mica powder, which is actually a perfect segue. So mica powders are literally what they sound like. They're little packets of powder and they again can easily go into these little bowls and mix them up together. And they are made on purpose to be able to work with UV resin. So they're not going to be too dark um, or too opaque. They're gonna be perfect for giving you a really nice color base also. So pre-colored UV resin is interesting because I've never actually tried that. Um, I did see recently, I actually picked up some of it, that there's some black UV resin I have not tried it. I don't understand if it even works yet, but I am interested and intrigued by that idea because normally a black piece wouldn't really work. So how big of a piece can you make with UV resin is a great question. I tried, this is more of like a mold that you would use for like a soap dish. There is a train coming. Can you hear that? <laughs> a little bit, but it's not too bad. Yep, I live near a railroad. That's funny. Okay, so this piece, to answer the question in the chat, I tried this piece with UV resin and it actually didn't work um, because it was too deep and it was too thick and it was too big of a surface. You end up with some puddles and some globs that never get hard. So it is better with much smaller pieces. Something probably less than a half dollar size would be perfect. Somebody else lives by a train. That makes me feel better. <laughs> All right. The light has gone and I can pop these out. Look how easy that is to pop out. Here's one of them. Here's another one. And I love mixing it myself because I love the kind of airy look you get. So I believe that this is a, I wish I knew. I didn't time it to see if it was 60 seconds, but I kind of think it's 60 seconds. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> so 60 seconds I did on one side and I flipped over my mold and did it another 60 seconds. And I was able to get these nice hard pieces. I'm going to let this train finish passing and then I'm going to come right back. So we have options at this point. We have these little studs that are flat. 
or we have um, some of these curved pieces that can make more of a dangly earring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the stud to the back of this piece. And the way that you're gonna do that is just by putting a little bit more UV resin on this part right here and letting it cure. So sometimes you wanna kind of set it up on something. Ooh, the train has finally passed, wow. <laughs> you just never know what's gonna happen during a live class, do you? I also see on this one um, that there's a little extra piece that was kind of like a puddle left over. So if you have any extra pieces hanging off, I like to take wire cutters and I like to kind of crack these extra pieces of resin off. You can also use sanding tools. Um, all of that can work to make you a really nice finish. It was 60 seconds that I let it cure. I'm gonna put a little dab of UV resin right here. And then I'm gonna put this stud, um, this flat stud against the UV resin and I'm gonna cure it with some light. So that's what I'm doing next. I'm gonna put a dab on this stud and I'm gonna put a dab on this stud and I'm gonna put them in their places. So I just leaned it up. I'll try and hold it closer to my camera in just a moment. Go. So you can see how I'm lining up these metal pieces with the back of the earring. And then I'm gonna put these under my light and we can test and see how long it is this time. Making sure that they're in place before I hit the light because the light will harden those into place. And there we go. So while this is curing, I'm gonna show you the difference between the set I'm using right now and another mold is that this set I'm using right now, these are the smaller version from that same set. I put a little bit of glitter into these just to give them some extra sparkle. And if there are any extra pieces that are hanging, I use these wire cutters to kind of click off and cut off any extra resin pieces that might be hanging out. If your pieces are a little bit sticky to the touch, that's when mother nature can take over from there and you can put them outside and leave them outside for a little bit and it should be able to uh, dry up any stickiness. So down here, it's still working. So it must be 60 seconds and we're getting ourselves the backings attached. So then you can then just go ahead and put those into your ears to make those great earrings. Now this is a different type of earring. So these are dry. And now they have these nice metal studs and you can have those just slip through your ear and you have a really cool hoop earring. So this is a pretty hard piece. It's just as hard as the piece itself. It's pretty sturdy, so it's not gonna come off of there. If you wanna hit it with that light, maybe for another 60 seconds, you might feel even better about it, but it is gonna be a pretty sturdy piece for you. So these are one set that are done and they're really cute, these hoops. I love that. And then these ones I'm showing you now that are blue with a little bit of glitter in them, these actually have holes in them. So they're pieces that have holes. This mold doesn't have any holes, so there's no way that you can put a jump ring into those pieces. You had to kind of attach and glue them onto the ends. But if you have a different type of mold, like this one, you can see how it has these little um, pieces that stick up in the middle of each one of these different shapes. What's great about those is that that is allowing for a hole. So this little stick that's sticking up in the middle of this mold is what actually is giving me a hole through this piece. And you can kind of see that hole if I hold this right, that I can then put a jump ring through and go ahead and make these into earrings. So I'm gonna show you that next piece of how to add jump rings if you have different types of moles that actually have holes that are ready to go. So I'll put my hoops off to the side and I'm gonna find some jump rings. This kit of jewelry findings I suggested is really, really good because it has jump rings. It has the backs that go, um, once you have those studs on, you can have these clasps that go on the back of your studs to keep them onto everybody's ear. 
This video will be available tomorrow. So if you don't have all your supplies, but you want to try this again later, you can go to our YouTube page and you can find this video and watch it again and again. And you can make all different kinds of things. So it has those backings. So that's going to keep it on someone's ear and it's going to keep it nice. And then also in here, like I said before, I have these types of earring backings. And I have some jump rings. So jump rings are another really good jewelry technique that I would love to show you some stuff about. When you're working with jump rings, I like to use two different pliers. And there is a reason for that. So I'm going to take a relatively large jump ring. And at a jump ring, there is an opening where the two pieces of metal come together. So a common mistake is to open a jump ring by widening the circle and kind of pulling it apart this way. But what you're really gonna do is you're gonna go and you're gonna open the circle in a different way by going up and down rather than apart. So you're not pulling the jump ring apart, you're moving one of the pieces forward and one of the pieces backwards so that you can open that space up and when you've opened that space up, you can put it through where that hole is from this particular piece. And then you can actually stick this jump ring through. And that gives you the base that then you can connect another jump ring. And you can make this as dangly as you want. You can add a couple more jump rings if you want some length. Or you can just add one more jump ring and have that complete it and have that connected to this piece. So I'm gonna show you that jump ring trick again. Don't open the jump rings by widening them. Open them by moving one of the sides forward and one of the sides back. So I'm moving, I'm kind of like twisting it open. And then once it's open, you can stick it through. So there's no need to sand it like you do with epoxy resin, but you can. You are always welcome to, depending on how you want your finish to be. The UV resin does add a little bit of a glossier finish um, than I think some of the epoxy resins. It just depends. So I was able to attach this. And it does. It really depends on the feel that you're into or that you like, what kind of finish you want. I'm gonna attach one more jump ring to each of these by opening them. And I see there's some other people, feel free to join in. Um, I know there's others of you who have done some of this before. If you have some other advice that you wanna add in, feel free to, you are more than welcome. So I just attached one more jump ring. And what I was able to do by doing that is Put this earring piece on it and so now it can dangle and you can hang it on someone's ear and have a really nice cool piece that's definitely going to do some sparkling as it hits some sun so on this one i'm going to add one more jump ring also to connect it to this earring backer backer so i'm going to open the jump ring by twisting not by tearing it open and then while it's open, I'm attaching it to the jump ring on the earring and I'm attaching it to the earring backer. Then I'm gonna put these two back together. And voila, I have a lovely pair of dangling earrings that are definitely going to sparkle in the sunlight. I have, um, these little tiny stud pieces came with the original mold I was using. So it has these smaller rings, which are the yellow ones that I had over here. It has the larger hoops, which are like these red ones that I made. And then it also has these tiny little discs that you can use as studs. And the way that you will attach the backings to these are exactly the same way we did on the back of these hoop earrings is just by adding a little bit more epoxy resin or adding a little bit more UV resin and putting those pieces under the light. 
So I'm going to put these back into their places. I'm going to put a dab of UV resin on each one. And then I'm going to take from the jewelry findings these studs that have this flat side to them, kind of like a little thumbtack. Yes, there is a UV flashlight that they sell at Michael's that you can use too if you don't have one of these lamps. So I'm attaching these, I'm laying these down in the resin drop that I have. I'm gonna pop the light over top of them and let these kind of solidify with that UV light. And if anyone at home right now is making any pieces along with us, I'd love to see what you're working on. Feel free to tag us at Learn With Michaels if you're on Instagram so that I can see some of the beautiful creations you've come up with. Even if you're watching this later on YouTube, let me see what you're working on. I'd love to see it. So we're going to let this keep going for just a little bit longer. And in what, that 30 minutes we've been together so far, we already have three sets of earrings done. So it is a fast, fast process, which I really like. We're going to make a couple more things before we go. So if you have other molds, there are so many different things that you can try. I'm letting this go. I do think it's a 60 second light. And then we're going to be able to pop those back out and just have some really nice little pieces that aren't super flashy, just for kind of some everyday wear. So having that metal backing to these little pieces now can give us these nice little studs that can match whatever color outfit you're trying to match it to pretty nicely using some of these different things. And we do have the backs that go with each one of these studs. So you could start a business. I mean, start customizing, start making some things, make some teen colors, sell it near a local college or high school, get everybody ready for prom. There are all kinds of businesses you can start with this UV resin. So there we have these cute little studs. I need some earring models so that I can show these off better. All right, let me show you um, a couple more, whoo, a couple more different kinds of molds just to kind of really get your creativity going about all the different things that you could potentially do. So with this first mold that came with the kit, we've made three different kinds of earrings. There is a different mold um, that looked like this. And what's cool about this mold too is this is a little kit and it comes with, I'm seeing if I can find them. The kit itself comes with little wooden pieces. I can't find them right the second, but you can put a little wooden piece at the bottom of this, and then you'll have a little bit of color or whatever you want at the top with the resin. And then you have a little wood piece at the bottom and the resin kind of holds that all together. So this is another really cute kit that you can buy if you don't already have it. And what I love about this one is all these little um, pieces that are sticking up are providing holes. And I think having the holes make it a lot easier to attach some jump rings and make things a lot more quickly. So I highly recommend that. They do sell resin that's already colored, um, but I personally like the clear because I like the versatility of being able to match it to whatever I want to match it to and adding whatever kind of sparkles and glitter I want to add to. So let me see. I believe this mold I'm showing you right now is Craft Smart. Um, so in the whole section with all the UV resin, there's a section where there's resin crafts and there's a section in jewelry. So there's some of these UV resin molds are in the jewelry section and some of them are in the craft resin section. Um, so what I like about these ones, I love these leaves. You can imagine this green can make some really cool um, little monstera plants um, that you can attach to key rings. So just by adding a jump ring in there, you can make a key ring. If you don't want your earrings to be so huge, you could make these into pendants. And then this nice size pendant, you could really lay down some like music notes or something to make it super personal for somebody. Um, that they might like. So, and then there's a couple of different versions of smaller studs also. And what's nice about these smaller studs is that you can attach them. So you can have a stud and then have something dangling from that stud also. 
So this is a really cool um, mold set as well that you can definitely get at Michael's. And this um, set of alphabet letters is one that I use all the time. I really like this one. So in fact, I think I'm gonna keep this one handy and make something with this next. So someone's asking about the difference between UV resin molds and clear silicone molds. Um, as long as you can see through it, any of the silicone molds can be UV resin molds, as long as you can see through it. If it is a um, thicker plastic that you cannot see through, it is not going to work. We also have these adorable gummy bear little molds that I love. I, I love putting a little jump ring on these and then being able to attach these onto keychains too. They're super, super cute. These gummy bear molds can be tricky though because you need to really use something like these little um, pin I was using before to get into all those crevices. If you have air bubbles, you're going to be missing a leg. Your gummy bear is going to be have missing limbs, which might not be what you were going for. So let's see. Maybe one of you want to recommend what I do next. Do you want to see me make a letter mold? Do you want to see me make one of these um, leaves? What kind of thing would you like to see me try next? Letter. Whoop. Okay. And with this letter, oh, letter and leaves. We'll see if we have time for both. So I'm going to do a letter first. And with this one, I'm going to show you how you can add in some of the different mix-ins to really give it some extra... Um, sparkle. So let me start with, let's see, what letter do I want? I think I want the letter B. So I'm going to use the letter B and I'm going to put just a little bit of resin into the mold to get me started. I'm going to use something like a toothpick or like one of these pins in order to move the resin around. I will do a leaf next. Absolutely. And someone was asking before about some air bubbles. So I can already see an air bubble right here. So I really just use this pin to kind of attack that bigger air bubble. And depending on how serious you are about this, if you need all of the air bubbles to disappear, you can do a lot of surgical work with that. But I am doing a pretty quick craft and I am feeling pretty good about the resin I have so far. Now, here's another thing. You can do layers. So I can right now click my light and I can give that a layer. And then it's hard on the bottom. I can add a layer of some glitter or some leaves or something special, put some more resin over top of it and make another um, layer. So you can make a couple of different layers. You can have one layer with um, some dye in it. You can have one layer with some sprinkles in it. You can have one layer that's clear. And then when you put it all together and look at it in the sun, depending on which way you hold it, you can have a really cool different looking piece. I don't know if there's glow in the dark resin. I haven't ever seen any, but I feel like that would be a great market item. So if anyone knows, oh, a glow in the dark mica powder is a good idea. So there we go. That could really, or if you take these to some place that has a white light and have some kind of, that would be cool too, to show that off. So those mica powders can help you with that part, it sounds like. So I'm letting this first layer, and I could crack this out if I wanted to and just have a very, very thin letter B, but I don't want a thin letter B. I want to build on that. So I'm going to add some more resin on top of that. And then I'm going to use some sprinkles, some glitter pieces. And so a lot of people use, um, come to Michael's and buy these pieces for nail art because they do work with your nails also. I don't recommend the UV resin with the nails because I can't promise you that that's going to work. But I know that these little pieces, um, people who own salons and things or who do it out of their houses, can come and buy all these cute little mix-ins and they really do work really well with your nail art too. So you can use tweezers. I was apparently using pliers because I didn't have my tweezers with me, but you can carefully place these or you can kind of just go with it and stir them in. But I'm taking some of these different um, pretty purples and reds and oranges and I'm putting them into a layer 
So after I hardened that first layer, I added a second layer um, that these are all kind of going into. And once I've kind of placed these where I want them to be, I'm gonna put some more resin over top of them and then I'm gonna hit them with the light and harden the whole thing. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I know that the UV light for nails would work. It is the same tool as this one. So you can definitely use that. I just don't recommend using the UV resin that we sell on your nails because that's not what it was intended for. And who knows how that would work. So I'm putting these pieces in. Again, a little wooden stick or a pin or something is nice to actually place these in places that you want. Making sure that I've kind of covered all the space. And I am going to add some more UV resin to the top of that. And I've done it before, like I said, where I've done a layer of this with putting these glitter pieces into their place. And then I've even put some a layer of glitter at the back just to kind of capture that too. So I'm moving these around. And I think I am going to go ahead and hit this with the light. And then I'm gonna see if I have some, I think I have some cool glitter. And it's just a regular kind of craft glitter I'm gonna hit the back of this with. I have just like a little container of glitter. So is the process the same for the way you use dried flowers? Yes. And you definitely wanna use tweezers when you're doing the dried flowers. So if you have a bigger space like this pendant, and you wanna lay a piece down, you want some wet resin in here, you wanna lay your piece down, you wanna put some more wet resin on top of it and then hit it with the light to kind of sandwich it in there. And this bee is looking pretty good now. And I'm gonna put just a little backing of glitter at the bee and you'll see how that kind of gives it another effect too. All right, the light's off. So far, so good. And now I'm going to put some, some more wet resin. Kind of get up to the top level of the mold. And I'm going to add some glitter. Here we go. Ooh, I'm excited for this one. I think it's going to be cool. All right. I'm gonna mix it around to make sure that I have glitter in all the places I want there to be glitter. Looks like I wanna add just a little bit more. You might notice that when you hit it with the light, it does shrink a tiny little bit. So if you have just a little bit of an arch of a bubble over top, so if it's about to spill over, but it hasn't yet spilled over, that's probably the right amount of resin. So I'm gonna stir this up and I'm gonna hit it with the light. And we're going to see this really cool bee. I think I'm going to use some green sprinkles to show the leaf for our grand finale. So that's going to be pretty cool. So someone said that they swirled some gel nail polish. Ooh, yeah, that's a great idea. That would work perfect. I love that. What I When I first tried with alcohol inks, what I loved about the alcohol inks too was that it was kind of airy and cloudy and it kind of gave some different levels of color. So I really liked using those alcohol inks too, but they can be tricky. So this is drying and you can easily turn this into a keychain. So actually while it's going right now, I'm gonna put just a little dab of resin in the corner of the letter B and I'm gonna take a larger jump ring and I'm gonna kind of position it up here. So I'll try and move this closer so you can see what I just did. So at the corner of the letter B, I'm putting a jump ring hanging over because I'm putting some resin here to harden that. And the jump ring is now going to be attached to this letter B. So I can turn it into a keychain or do anything like that after I've hardened it. So I'm gonna do this leaf next and I think I think I have some green glitter and I think that's gonna be pretty amazing. So I'm gonna tr try that. So putting that jump ring in that place is gonna give me something to attach it to. And then if I have a little chain 
or if I have a larger key keychain circle, which I don't think I have on the table today, but you can attach the jump ring to this little chain and then you can attach it to a backpack, a zipper pull, a computer bag, anything you want to. So that's pretty cool. This B is just about done. And I think I might have some overflow places that I'm gonna show you the technique of kind of cutting it down again with my wire cutters. I'm gonna clean up my workspace because I am just going to town over here, making all kinds of cool things. So this letter B is gonna have some levels to it. Here we go. It's my favorite part, pulling it out of the mold. Ooh, I love it. So it has, it has the pink and red and orange sparkles to it, but then it has that layer of the glitter at the very back to be able to see the letter B. And then there's still some clearness to it, which is cool. So on this side, it looks very much like the glitter. And on this side, it looks a lot more of the sparkle with the glitter on the background. So I love that it has some layers. And I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of hard to see since I'm low light today, that there's some jaggedy pieces of extra resin right here. And that's what I'm talking about clipping off. So I'm going to use my wire cutter and kind of clip those extra pieces off. And then it'll make for a much nicer finish on the side. And most of this piece is very even and you wouldn't need to do any kind of sanding to it because it's a nice even finish. But I'm clipping off any extra pieces of the resin that might be hiding. And then I have this cute letter B that I can attach and make into a keychain. So I love that. All right, grand finale. Here comes this leaf. So you could make both of these into earrings. I'm just gonna focus on one of them. And I'm just going to make something that I could eventually either turn into a pendant or turn into a keychain. And because this has a lot of space in it, you really want to make sure that the resin goes to all the different corners. So make sure you use something to push it around. Make sure it gets into all of those spaces so that you don't have some missing branches or some missing parts of your leaf. So I'm scooting it around and making sure that it gets into all of the nooks and crannies. And I'm going to do a thin layer just to get it going. And then I'm going to start adding some sparkle to it. So I'm moving this around, making sure. Also, you probably want to work on a nice, even piece. So the jump ring on the letter B, somebody missed it. While it was still in the mold, um, let me find my mold. While it was still in the mold, I just put a jump ring right here in this corner, kind of laying off of the mold and attached a little bit more UV resin. So the resin hardened, and now that jump ring is attached to that letter B using that UV resin. So I can turn it into lots of other things. All right, I have a pretty good layer going here and I'm gonna start adding some green glitter because I think this is gonna be awesome. So this is just a regular glitter that I think I probably got around Christmas time. And any glitter will do. The kids section has a ton. So you don't want to overwhelm it with glitter because you need the light to be able to still go through to cure it. So I'm going to put a little bit of glitter, spread it around, make sure I'm getting glitter in all of the nooks and crannies. And then I'm going to keep adding a little bit more until it's the, the amount that I want. So could you add a backing pin? Oh, I love that. Yeah, so you can, um, that's what I did with the studs. So that backing piece, I added a little bit of UV resin and then hit the light. And so now this piece is attached to it. And so, yeah, if you wanted to make this into like a brooch or something, you could absolutely do that. I'm gonna add some more UV resin. And <laughs> thank you everybody who's here live with me right now encouraging me and going through this with me. We've had some interesting uh, trains coming through and birds are out here chirping. So there's a lot going on in my backyard, but I'm glad that you're here with me today. It's been fun. And this video will be available tomorrow on YouTube. So if you want to get some more supplies and try again, 
or you want to keep making, there's lots of really cool videos that we have for you to watch. So I'm going to mix this around and make sure that I'm getting all of it. I'm really using that wooden stick this time. I'm going to add some more UV resin because I want it to kind of level out. And each time I'm adding, the glitter's moving around, so I want to keep making sure I'm on a nice level place. I've definitely made I've definitely made leaves before where when I pull it out, it accidentally I forgot a space or there's glitter all over in one corner but not in the other corner. So you'll make some mistakes along the line and along the way, and you'll learn too. Adding a little bit more, stirring it up. And I think I'm ready for my first set of light. And then I'm going to put a little bit more resin and do a last set of light. So here comes my first lighting up that leaf. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Can I give it some time? That's quick. I just was, I saw a clump and so I went to stir it and it's already hard in just those first couple of seconds. So the 60 seconds should be more than enough time to make it completely hard, but I do sometimes still like to flip over and hit it from the back also just to make sure there's no hidden puddles underneath. So I'm going to take this time and let it do its thing. And then I'm going to see where we're at. And if I want to add a little bit more resin to make the top nice and smooth and nice and even. I could do that too. And if I missed any places with the glitter on this next last round, I can add in a little bit more glitter too and make sure that I have full coverage. My light went off. And you can kind of see, oh, I see an air bubble. There we go. If anything's happening on the other side that needs some attention. So it looks like this is still pretty oozy. So because there is a lot of glitter in here, I hope I didn't use too much, but we will soon find out. So I'm adding a little bit more to the top. I'm not going to add any more glitter because I think that there's pretty much glitter in there. And I'm going to do 60 seconds on this side and 60 seconds on the other side, and then we're going to pop it out and see what's happened. So there's a question in the chat that says, if you take it out of the mold and see that it's there's not enough color, can you put it back in and adjust it? Yes. What is really cool too, like thinking about these letter ones. So if I would have pulled that letter out and I didn't like it, you can go back to the very beginning of the letter and put a very thin layer of the resin, put some more glitter, and then put that piece back on top of it. And it's just gonna make your overall piece a little bit thicker, but it's gonna connect those two. So as long as the UV light can still get through to cure the resin, the resin sandwich that you have, you can absolutely do that. So here we go. Yep, these beginner kits that have the light, they have a mold, they have some UV resin right there. That's a huge savings of having all of those things. And then you don't have to keep rebuying them. And then... um. I think probably the most expensive part is the UV resin itself, but a, a little goes a long way because what you're doing, they're not huge pieces. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to let the light hit it from this side too. So yeah, the, it does, ooh, it does look intimidating. Resin is something that looks intimidating. It's a chemical. So it's a little bit, you know, you might be scared, but once you get going and you feel more and more comfortable with it, make sure you're in a very well lit ventilated space. Um, keep yourself safe. Feel free to wear masks, gloves, everything that you need to stay safe. It's really fun and it's pretty easy. So I love the UV resin because there is no mistake in mixing the two different parts and knowing what the ratios are and things like that. It's already done for you. And as you can see through this class, it's fast. You just hit it with some light for a minute or two, and it's really fast. Also with the UV resin, make sure that the kind that you're using says UV on it. And also make sure that it's the hard type. We had some mistakes where some people had bought the soft type. And so they don't, it doesn't harden in the same way the hard type does. 
And so it wouldn't pop out in the same way. All right, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh. Cool. Love the glitter. I definitely see some extra pieces of the resin hanging off over here. So I'm going to crack some of those off. But I love the sparkles of this. It looks really cool already. Where are my wire cutters? Here they are. I'm going to snap some of these pieces off. This extra resin. Love it. And this one does have a hole because the mold itself had that little stick that was coming up. So there is a hole that I can stick through to add keychains. But if there wasn't a hole, you can always go ahead and add a jump ring the same way we did with the other letter. So this is one that I definitely want to take some time and kind of get all these pieces straightened out to make sure that all these leaves are nice and mold it the way that they are. But I really like that green glitter. I love the way that's showing up. And this is another really cool, fun, interesting piece. So that's cool. I love that glitter. You can kind of see the leaves, but I do want to take some more time and really go in there and finish that all. So yeah, there are little hand drills that are available. So if there is not a hole in one of your molds and you want to make a hole, there are little hand drills that you can go through and you can add your own hole and then you can add jump rings and things like that too. So I think that's it for today. I am so glad that you joined me. We had a lot of fun. We made a couple pairs of studs. We made a couple pairs of hoops. I even made a ring before using a ring mold. So have fun, get all the different molds, get all the different charms and just really go to town and make some really cool resin jewelry. So the beginner set one more time had this light in it. It had this mold. Um, there's two to, two or three different beginner sets, but I like this one. Um, it has these earring molds. It comes with a light. It comes with a little bottle of UV resin and some other um, other items to get you started. It's a really good kit to start with. So thank you for coming. It was great hanging out with you this afternoon. Bye.